What yesterday. was that like when Kid Leroy came in and? It's fine. Like you know, for I mean, we're just treating like people. You know, yeah. like, if they're nice, they're nice. Less impressed, more involved. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's what we want. Like if they're cool, you know, I, I don't get starstruck with anyone. No. Yeah. That's probably it. He's my favorite artist, right? Yeah. Or Blink One Eight Two. Oh, bro. If they come to the shop, holy fuck. <sighs> you have to I'll put me. Feet. You have to. You I'm have like, to insert all my cool. tattoos. Hey, click. <laughs> yeah, same. Can you sign me and I'll get a tattoo of it? <laughs> Welcome to the Servo Show. We have Edward Maradona here. It is his baby's ninth birthday today. He has no children though. His baby is Cabinet Noir, a uh, concept store. Yes, no? Yes. So yes. that's the idea. It's a concept store. Um, that was in the business plan. And I've always wanted to create a concept store, not just a regular store. There you have it. He is here. Just sounds cooler. <laughs> <laughs> he is here and uh, yeah, fuck. How you been? Been good. Thanks for having me. Um, Literally, on ninth year birthday, we just I just had a, you know, a massive conference call with Pima, which is awesome. They want to support us our birthday. Um, you know, we've just been talking with our legacy brands, um, trying to celebrate because next year it's our tenth year anniversary. So for us, ninth year is a big, kind of a teaser for ninth uh, for tenth year anniversary next year. Ooh. Super excited, twenty twenty three, and as a Jordan number twenty three. Those of you who like the Jordan, oh, so good. So what's a legacy brand? Legacy brands for us, it's like brands that have existed in our store for over five years since the beginning. So brands like Puma has been there since day one. Um, you know, like they become a family. And if you have brands that have been there, not necessarily since the beginning, but they came in midway um, and they've been supporting us and helped our business since then as well. So we consider them as a legacy brand. Like Comme de Garçon has been huge help for us um, to open a lot of doors. Um, and then we have a, a lot more other new legacy brands that we want to keep maintain if you think about it it's kind of like fine dining restaurant they have the the key ingredients they're super proud of you know the wagyu is yeah. always the you know, iconic the dishes. iconic dish the the duck breast the, yeah yeah the yeah. ceviche go back to day one <laughs> mm. go back before day one who are you what the fuck do you do how do you how before did you day get... one everyone used to call me edit and they still do um start off as a as a b-boy if you don't know what that that is it's a break dancer or breakers um, B-Boys stands for Break Boys, and that's what I was doing throughout my 20s. Um, I graduated high school, went straight into university because I had to. What did uh, you study? Film, video, and multimedia. I had a degree, double major. So I was doing master's, and then I dropped out of master's because I was like, I don't want to do post-grad. And just started breaking, um, more f- traveling around the world, trying to figure out what I want to do. Yep. When you're 18, 19, 20, 21, you don't know what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to forced myself into getting into a career that I didn't want to pursue. So 27, decided I had the opportunity to open a store or I had the opportunity to either open a store or get a house. What was it like backtracking to 21 when you, you, know, you still don't know what to do? Being from a, a, an ethnic background, what's that like in that household? Um, well, we ha- I had divorced parents. So mum was very quite liberal. She's not a typical Asian mum. She's like, it's not, oh, she already finished the degree, so whatever. What do you, what do you want to do? What makes you happy? And at the time, I was just traveling, working at Foot Locker, working at Adidas, G-Star, on a, a part-time casual, whilst I was traveling, competing um, around the world. And I like traveling, and that's what I would suggest any young persons to do. Travel, you know, and just see the world, see the, the standards you want to live in. Because if you're stuck here, you don't know what you're doing and you're just stuck in this bubble and you start hating Perth, right? When you start traveling around the world, you, you realize, all right, I want to do that. I want to do that. You meet some pe- new people and you network, expanded. Um, so that's what I, my biggest suggestion for young people who just graduate or they, they don't know what they want to do. Just start traveling. Um, you might even find a passion in traveling. You make a living out of traveling. Who knows? But Eddie, how do I make money if I, uh, to, make, to go traveling? Only fans, travel. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. You can make money on TikTok yeah, yeah, and travel. True. Can confirm. Right, I just bumped me to my friend who's, who's kind of seeing this girl and, and she makes a living off traveling. So she's been on travel the last couple of years or something like that. Yeah. Insane. It's an, it's an insane hustle. For me, like I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I can monetize my travels mm. better, like mm. hitting up hotels and shit, but I just hate asking. And especially because I know a lot of them now are going, oh, these influencers, they're fucking this taking the piss. Learn. You don't want to ask. You want to be asked, right? Well, so that's, like, that's the game, right? So it's like yeah. you want to you wanna throw the bait, but you don't want to be like, hey, like guys, like, you know, um, so you kind of want them to approach you. So I'll, I'll focus on me and what I'm doing, what we're doing as a team, as a brand, 
rather than like asking, you know, brands, hey, uh, we've done that in the beginning. We used to ask, hey, can we do collaboration? Can we do this? And I was so hungry to do that. And we get knocked back all the time, yeah. all the time. And now we're like, as our brand expanded, they're knocking on our door now. I'm like, hey, can we do collaboration? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, if it lines up, then we'll do it. Um, but we don't, we don't want to do that anymore. And yeah. we just want to focus. Like, like as soon as they increase your value, everyone will start, start knocking on your door. Yeah. That, do, you, do you listen to the people that said no to you originally? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't take them to heart. I just think we're not ready. And, you know, like, I agree. But, oh, man, maybe we're just too optimistic trying to yeah. get in early. And we're just trying to rush it. Yeah. You know, it's always like that. Same with, with same life. Same with any industry. With anything. Yeah. Well, same with anything. But your life, people are always comparing their life to someone else. My God, like, yeah, that person's only 21, only made a billion dollars. And you're like, oh, no. Everyone had a different journey. Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, some information made a billion dollars through that own, you know, whatever they were doing. Only fans. Like, only fans. But not only that, like, I've seen a lot of young entrepreneurs inspired me yeah you know i've seen some um young persons like 23 whatever and it's like coaching online coaching and helping other people i'm like wow he's so young and i wish i can do that there's a lot more now than it was back then definitely like information is so accessible now thanks to the internet right Mm. and that's where the kids are like now they're all on their phones Mm. and the parents are like don't go on their phone i'm like no go on the phone as long as you're looking for the right things yeah yeah yeah. don't fuck around yeah yeah that's what i'm trying like tiktok's good (laughs) <laughs> but then you know you can. There's like 99 percent junk <laughs> on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Entertaining. Oh. Social media is good, like anything. Instagram is good, but then yeah. you got you got to filter it out. Yeah, my my attention hack is how can I give value inside that 99 percent junk? Then they realize, oh, it's not actually junk. Mm. So you're in your 20s. You're break dancing. You're traveling. You're working at all these different places, getting experience, getting connections. What made you go? I'm going to commit to my own thing now. Well, when we were 19 or 18, when I started Foot Locker, I remember like talking to all our homies like, and working at Foot Locker. Man, one day we're going to have our own sneaker store. Um, and then out of those people, three actually did it. Um, and the rest stuck, stuck in the company and went all the way to higher top. And, and you know, that's their journey. Um, Foot Locker, which is awesome. And I'm still close friends with them. Um, and then after that, we just, you know, like I just, I just let it go. I just didn't really think about it too much until I had the, um, like I said, when I was 26, 27, had the chance to go, oh, either buy a house or invest in a business. So I threw everything into the business. Um, should have asked around for experience and, you know, like <laughs> advice back then. But back then, like, you got no internet. You can't just Google how to start a store. Nowadays, you start, like, you, you, you Google and you can, uh, on YouTube, you, some people will just tell you how to run a business from yeah. scratch to... to so 27, that. that makes you 36 now, technically? I'm 36, yeah. yeah. So, and, and that's what something I, I noticed on Instagram today about your story. You had no idea. You were winging it. Winging it. Even now, you know, you know what's funny, right? I thought I was winging it. And, and there was a point in my life where I started going, you know what, I had to, you know what, everyone's winging it. Did you? You know, when I went to... That's this, me now. This, the, the, big, the, the big moment was when I went, when I went to Paris. Um, I was invited in, into this table of uh, dinner for with, like, iconic people, you know, people from Complex Magazine, Hypebeast, Essence, Idol. Like, these these are experienced people. And I was on the table and I had Hypebeast and other journalists ask me, hey, Eddie, like, I've seen you on the show. Da-da. What do you think the next trend is going to be? And I'm like, Hypebeast asking me this? <laughs> I mean, that's when I figure out, you know what? Ah, oh, you know what it is? Everyone's winging it here too. Yeah. Everyone's in Fashion Week trying to wing it, trying to figure out what's happening, what's going to be the big trend. That's when I go, all right, no one knows what they're doing. We're all in the same boat. And I've seen people who's got more experience than me um, struggling to keep their store afloat, struggling to keep their brand afloat. They don't know what they're doing to get the, the brand across globally. So everyone's on the same journey. Yeah. I look at Louis Vuitton still trying to figure that out. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, you look at, oh, who do, who do I... You know, in, um, introduced as a creative director, but you see all the big brands doing that. So everyone's winging it in, in a sense. Yeah. I think I think the most common thing between everyone is the fact that you're actually doing something, mm. and that's the one percent. Trust your gut, and I think if you're passionate about what you're doing and you love what you're doing, and it comes across to to your work, um, to the products you you're presenting, to the products you offering the people. Like, you know, I love going back into the analogy of um, the culinary 
industry, right? The, the chef, you know, the Michelin star chef, their journey. I look at through, you know, the, the beginning, first 20, 10, 20 years, they're all struggling, trying to figure out, trying to find out their, then there's the style, the character, the individuality, until they hit that, oh, this is what I want to do. I'm going to perfect this. I'm going to master this. And then they become well known for that particular thing. And I like that, you know, people just, a lot of these chefs, the, especially the three star Michelin <laughs> chef, and I really respect it. And I see that in fashion as well. So that's what we want to do. All right, let's, you know, we've done experimentation. Um, we've learned our foundation. We've learned how to do French cooking. But now how can we incorporate that foundation into this? Yeah. How do we add the icing on the cake, the cake being the foundation of it? Hmm. Um, and then that's what makes a difference, the, the icing on the cake. It does, it does. Yeah, and that's your own personal icing as well. Yeah, Can't I mean, what we're doing is not unique or not original at all it's it's been there i'm just getting it i'm just learning from different brands different people different yeah. companies but your but your up. actual personality yeah is we're the just difference. putting our own twists yeah. our individual like you know for example i like certain things i like hip-hop you know i like edm music i like party i like festival i like you know meeting people and i like people from different genres so it shows in our in our brand yeah and now even our group of people are just so diverse um and i like that you know yeah. meeting people like with their own story like, you know, yourself, I'm finding like, man, very intriguing. Hmm, what Seth's doing? Oh, how does how he got a million followers on TikTok, you know? <laughs> From when I first saw you to now, I'm like, well, there was a gap that I didn't know. Well, what's going on <laughs> between that? He's Seth's doing his own, you know, going to the Himalayas, came back as Batman kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I see it. I'm like, what? One point one, one billion? Like, how, how, the, how the fuck? <laughs> like you said, it is nothing someone's not done before, but it's something that I enjoy and I just went all in on. And... Again, I had no strategy. I was winging it. Man, like Mr. Uh, Beast, right? Yeah. He's winging it still. But he's been I doing it for that. over 10 years. Mm. And I'm like year number three, I think. Mm. Year number four. I've been in But two. what I like is he, he doesn't chase for money. No. He just want to create content. Yeah. And I love yeah. that. I'm like, man, just, every time he makes money, just give it back yeah. or throw it away. See, right now I'm, wow, I'm wow. working about, I'm working on the business skills because mm. the business skills help me continue creating. Yeah, that's what I wish I had when I was younger. The yeah. business side of things. Learning about profits and losses, yeah. learning about budgeting, learning about cash flow. Yeah. You know, all these things that I didn't wasn't into. No. I was like, oh, I'm a creative. I don't want to learn about that. But now I was like, hey, if you're a business owner, you need to learn that. Yeah, I was learn very your fortunate. your business, learn the money. If you want to make it. money, you got to be good at money. I was very fortunate to learn three years ago, just before COVID hit, about the kind of the matrix in mm. the world, you know, like the take the red pill and, and escape the rat race. Mm. How, to, how to escape the rat race is, you know, pay yourself first. You make, you make money to invest the money to make more money. The money makes you money. If the money makes you money, you're free. That's it. Mm. If you, the money makes you enough to cover cost of living, you're free, you do whatever you want. You play with house money. And as long as the banks don't cancel your account, you're sweet. Mm. <laughs> so, but going back to you, you're now in your 30s, but halfway through... To be fair, I'm, I feel like I'm living my 20s now. My, tw young, my, dead, right? my 20s, I feel like I'm just doing my teenagehood then, right? You're just yeah. trying to figure out what oh. you're doing. You feel like you're kind of back 10 years right now, like yep. every decade. I feel like it. And now I'm like, all right, cool. I've got four more years before my 40s, which is my adulthood. That's what I think. Yeah. So I need to get shit figured out before my but 40s. But you'll still be technically in your 30s. Yeah. Feeling but I'm, that's why I'm still dabbling. You know, we just opened a cafe and now we're dabbling to different businesses. Um, I'm looking at, you know, getting into some, getting into liquor, getting into um, villas, you know, getting into... Mobile apps. NFT, fashion mm. NFT. And now we're talking to um, our app, our ticketing app. So if you notice, I'm just like, there's like so many things that I'm trying working different on. different things. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do in life. Yeah. I want to know what I want to do when I grow up. Kind what's, of been, thing. what's been your biggest failure so far? But well, I'm going to reword it. What's been your biggest learning moment so yeah, far? Yeah, well, I don't ever say failure because to me, failure is like a learning curve. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, maybe, I don't know. I came close to a lot of, a lot of times where I, I came close to like really killing my business. Cabinet. Like cabinet? Cabinet. Yeah. Just doing dumb shit, you know? Like, like what? Oh, it just wasn't wasn't there. Like there was a time where I was like, you know, going through a breakup and I, mom, I wasn't mentally there. So I had to rely on my staff, which, and they relied on my leadership. Relied on my, and I wasn't there to lead. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, just off into party life, you know what I mean? Which, don't, don't get me wrong, that party I life remember that. got me a I remember lot that of, Eddie phase. I didn't oh, know you that well. 2016, 19, it was like, oh, I remember good, that good old phase. time. I, was, no, I still remember <laughs> those days. 
But don't get me wrong, it's like I loved it because like my, in my 20s I didn't party. So I started partying in my late 20s, the 30s, early 30s. Um, and I was like, oh, try to figure out what the party life is like, you know. Mm. And that's when I network a lot. I started became, began networking a lot more. Um, so it kind of helped the business too, but I wasn't there. So I was just like networking outside, but I wasn't working inside the business, right? I was like, yeah, I do my thing. Scout. And people see me as a brand. I'm like, yeah. oh, this Eddie Cabin Noir, blah, blah, blah. but then I wasn't there mm. to make money. So, so how did that reflect on the business? Oh, horrible. And, and I always say your business always reflects um, your personal life, how you, what you're dealing with. If you're mentally not there, if you're feeling upset, depressed, anxious, whatever, you, you're feeling down, it reflects on your business. It shows. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a complete mirror. Um, people don't see it. I think most business owners will see that. You know, your personal life reflects on your business. Yeah. So if you are like constantly damaging, sabotaging your life, your business will suffer too. Especially if you like fuck around. If you fuck around in, in your personal life, you tend to fuck around in business. Mm. So same. sometimes I'm trying to figure out how like people who live that life. I'm like, how are they still maintaining? How do, how do Dan Bazirian live that life and still maintaining? But then again, he also lost a lot of money. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, so I don't know. Um, I don't know, I'm a different journey now. So I'm like, all right, yeah. cool, health and fitness. And then now it's like focus on the business. Again, now understanding uh, the minute side of thing of like the details of, the, of how to run a business. So now I can like, and, and I don't have to do all that. I've got teams, I've got people who are really good at that. I've got accountants who are really good at that. So you started delegating. Yes, I, you know, I'm building mastermind, right? Like what yeah. thing Grow Rich book says, build a mastermind, don't rely on, if you're, if you're not a lawyer, get a lawyer to understand yeah. law. You're not an accountant, get an accountant to understand finances. <laughs> that's right. So don't try to do everything yourself, build a team, build a mastermind, and that's what we have. We've got teams around the cafe, we've got teams around the store, teams around the brand, and then teams around the finance. Teams are just, these people are my family that really collectively help the essentially the rocket ship that we're flying at the moment. What was the turning point for when you went and said, okay, uh, enough fucking around and partying, I need to not kill my business here? The turning point was when I owe a lot of brands a lot of money because I was like, at the time during, this is being open, right? Because retail market was flying down rapidly. This is probably 2000, oh, starting 2018, 19, maybe earlier than that, 2017, retail was already like, well, we're competing against online. Online was booming and we were in that space properly. We're competing against, you know, um, online giants already spending $5 million for um, advertising a month, a week. And then we got, what, $100 budget a week to compete oh. against these giants. How do you compete, right? Um, so retail was going like this to a point where like, all right, we owe this brand money, we owe this brand money, we owe this brand money because... With our business, you have to buy stock early beforehand and then you pay it later. But then if you're selling a stock, you, you still have invoices to pay within 30 days. But then the stock is sitting there. So you're not, you're not being able to pay all the stock. So what do you do? Right, so we just have to extend, extend, extend until we get really shitty and then we're like, oh fuck, what do we do? And that's because like my projection of sales are completely wrong, completely um, ruined by I guess I'm not blaming the retail market because economy goes up and down. But if I looked at it closely, I would have, I should have been more careful with my spending. But it's relying on the miners and the miners gone. And then now, before you know it, 10,000 people left um, the offices because miners gone. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So like all these things, chain reaction. And I'm a big believer in law of attraction, right? If you believe like the solution is gonna come and it will, it will come. And that's part of the reason why we moved to Rain Square. Um, and then all these things, losing, even losing key brands that we didn't want to lose. You know, we didn't want, we still wanted to work, but then they just being too forceful with things, right? So how uh, do you do with that? Um, well, we have to be upfront. Like, this is not, we can't do it. If you're not supporting us, Joe, you know, I've been supporting you, you know, then we can't continue this relationship. At the time I was trying to maintain the relationship. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you just learn how to let, let go. And, and these are key, key business and our key brands in our business. Do you know what I mean? And that's why those brands are not there anymore because they don't, our direction changed. They want yeah. us to go this way and we don't want to. And you didn't sell yourself. No, we don't want to be dictated by the big brands, especially, yeah. you know, like this is the blueprint since that get go, help us, you know what I mean? And, and, and they didn't see it. So we have to let them go. And, and, and that actually works better because now our brand's taking over. A brand's on a projection where everyone wants to represent. Oh, a brand. it's gone higher. It's yeah. going above. So yeah. you 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 have cabinet and you have merch. 
your own cabinet merch. But then you also have uh, Our Race. Is that still Our a Race. thing? Yeah. Our Race was my first brand. Our Race, yeah. Um, I remember that was my first ever purchase. Yeah. So it came from the word All Races, All Race. And I yeah. like that. I'm like, oh, that stuck on and I changed spelling. That was like the first brand. I, I want to bring it back. It has such a cool name. Yeah. Um, and people still wear the stuff and I still see it every now and then. Man, that T-shirt's been there like 10 years. Yeah. How do you still have it? The quality is so good. Yeah. <laughs> still alive for 10 years, over 10 years. 2009, we started that. Um, no, I kept it a focus now. You know, like I really want to put, because I'm like, my ADHD kicks in every time. Oh, I want to start doing this. I want to start doing active wear brand. I want to start doing this. And then again, I'm like, Eddie, learn from a mistake. You were spreading yourself too thin. Focus on these. You got a cafe? Awesome. Stick with that. You know, we got the brand, stick with that. Store, stick with that. We've got three things going on. Yeah. And then everything else, all the other side projects, I'll make sure it's not going to, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? It's going to um, gonna get me out of the thinking about sidetrack, yeah. I guess. You know so what I mean? you're, you're looking at the C, CPT model, the the, the ch- uh, choice, uh, um, the, the choice, the priority, and the time over time. Choice, priority. Choice priority time, CPT. So which, which choice are you going to make? Is it, the prior, is it priority mm. or not? And overall, how much time does that take, right? Exactly. If you have a top priority thing that's going to take you a lot of time, you probably want to smash that out sooner than later. It's like kind of going on the main quest. Mm. It's like one of my favorite analogies. You need to gamify your life, kind of like you do in real life, right? Uh, kind of like you do in video games. So... You're making cabinet, you've made cabinet noir and you've pivoted so many times. You had setbacks, you had to move to, you had to but, move but to I, rain? I see it like this, like for me, like this is the ideal goal, right? Yeah. My, my goal is to set, have the cabinet noir as the top of the umbrella, top of the chain mm. and then the cafe, the villa, the bar, the liquor, whatever I'm doing, the brand. That all gonna, this is going to be an ecosystem yeah. under a cabinet noir brand. Yeah. So if I make the brand is big enough. This only going to elevate. Yeah, the other of course, things. it's going to be like a cash, right? cash. Well, not only that because the, the thing. name is so, like the brand itself, so strong that people are associated with the brand. With and then when they see the name, the brand in, in a different industry. For example, if we open a, a bar, so and so particular bar by Cabernet Noir, people know. Oh, Cabernet Noir's bar. Yeah. So that's in, they have a comfort. The, they. They association. Associate, and they yeah. associate with luxury and conceptual, right? Anything mm. that we do has to be luxurious and has a, a nice concept to it. And you're not a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. And that helps. Yeah, it, it helps a lot. Well, I don't know. Like maybe being a piece of shit also helps the brand. Depends <laughs> on how you want to sell the brand. Yeah, depends right. on your target audience mm. long term. So, and that goes back to kind of like the, the game of fire theory. But like, let's say another analogy I like to use is cleaning your room. The ultimate goal is to have everything sorted, yeah. right? And then if something falls on the floor, as long as you identify it early, you can pick it back up. But if you try and comp- try and clean everything at the same time, pick up all the rubbish in at the same time, pick up all the clothes, sort some shit out, move some furniture out. If you try and do it all at the same time, and this is the ADHD thing, you're not going to fucking get anything done. Not in a not in a hurry. But if you focus on one thing then everything else systematically comes together, like your yeah, other brands. You just make me anxious by reminding my room. I have like uh, four different rooms full of clothes and shoes. Well, that's what Jordan Peterson uses as an analogy. He he says, clean your room. Mm. I clean my room very quickly. <laughs> Done. Yeah. But then there's like so much junk there and I need to declutter, right? I'm like, yeah. and that's how I kind of want to see my business. Yeah. So like there's so much shit that I need to declutter. Yeah, it's metaphorical. But I want to focus on one section first. Exactly. That section's done. Let's go this section. What is that? What is that for you right now? Right now it's the brand. For us is the brand. We, the brand, the clothing brand has such a, a massive opportunity and potential to go. And, and we have, when we went to Paris Fashion Week, you know, we, we met clients from, oh my God, from countries. I don't even know they stock our brand, but they're wearing it in Paris. I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, we stock your brand. Um, yeah, yeah, we love it. The whole country loves the brand. You know, we had Jay-Z bought our stuff at, at uh, one of our stockers in New what? Jersey. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, you got so Jay-Z our, wearing your threads. Yeah, so our agent was like, hey, by the way, Jay-Z has bought um, some of your pieces from a New Jersey stocker. So I'm like, what? We had a New Jersey stocker? <laughs> That's I didn't even know. I'm like, yeah, 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 this so-and-so. And JC walked in and, and bought some stuff. I'm like, awesome. And, you know, bought some cab stuff. Um, 
and this is starting to happen. You know, we started seeing like artists, celebrities coming in. Um, you know, we had Sticky Fingers came in, just wearing, bought our stuff. They, we didn't give them the clothes. We just like, he, they just come in, bought some stuff, you know, and because they, they, they like the brand and, and so on. And, and that's what we want. We want people to come in and buy the brand. Yeah. So how do you how do you leverage that? How do you take advantage of that situation? So let's say Jay Z is on tour, and he's wearing your your threads. You can clearly see it. What do you mm. do there? If he wears like the thing is about celebrity placement is its own thing, mm. right? So like for example, brands would um, uh, work with stylists, and stylists would go, "Hey, um, talk to the different brands. Hey, we want some pieces. We want a leather jacket that's kind of out there for the next show." for so-and-so, for Justin Bieber, for Jay-Z, whatever. So the stylists then come and pick. That's how you see celebrities wearing a certain thing. They don't, have, they don't usually have a say what they want to wear. They, the stylists come in with a rack full of clothes from different brands and then by chance the celebrity will pick and oh, wear it. sounds like a dream to me, so I don't have to fucking think yeah, about it's it. it's so easy, right? And they get like clothes to wear every, every show. Ugh. For me, I don't really like, I don't really, I'm not even into that because like you only see it in one show. If you get the photo, amazing. But the photo will only last like 24 hours and yeah. people forget about it, right? Yeah. So you can't really – but then I want people to come in and buy our stuff, you know. I want people well, to yeah. Go, I, I mean, I like if, if there was an off chance that Jay-Z was wearing your – when he wears your stuff and there is a photo, oh, yeah, are you allowed 100%. to grab that and go, holy yeah, shit? Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Yeah. You know, and you know what? Unless – we're not selling the photo. We're not making money out of the photo. No, just show, hey, no, look, no. Using is it as a promotional tool. Yeah. Though. I mean, we started getting that a lot where we get promoters. Um, for example, our homies, um, promoters from Bolt, uh, the night in on Saturday, Isaac Bailey's event. They're coming, hey, um, DJ's coming, want to wear stuff to the show tonight. Hell yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, we'll support them. Yeah, because like, I notice you always or sometimes have um, you close your store for those people to come in. Um, yeah. That that's really cool. Because yeah, managers sometimes they contact Hayes. Um, for example, Kidleroy wants to come in. Can you shut the door for a couple of hours? Yeah, sure. Hey, Gunner wants to come in. Can you shut the door for a couple of hours? What yeah, was sure. that like when Kidleroy came in? And it's fine. Like you know, for I mean, we just treat them like people. You know, yeah. like, if they're nice, they're nice. Less impressed, more involved. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's what we want. Like if they're cool. You know, I, I don't get starstruck with anyone. No, you can't because then they'll be like, oh, here we go. Yeah. You know? Maybe if it's Kid Cudi, I'll be like, oh, man, can I get an autograph? Yeah. That's probably it. He's my favourite artist, right? Yeah. Or I Blink mean, 182. Oh, bro. If they come to the shop, holy fuck. <sighs> I'll, you have to I'll put rub me. their feet. You have to, you have like, to insert all my tattoos. Hey, click. <laughs> yeah, same. Can you sign me and I'll get a tattoo of it? <laughs> I, actually, I actually almost did that when I met mm. Mark when, back That'd in 2013. Cool. That'd be cool. When I met my... Should put a Blink-102 thing on there. Well, I got the pop vinyls. I might put mm. them in the background, but it doesn't really match the aesthetic, does it? No. Yeah, you can. I wish, I wish I had like a rotating wall that I'm like, all right, new aesthetic, new yeah. aesthetic. But when I met the boys in, in 2013, obviously Travis didn't travel because of fucking his plane stuff, mm. um, understandably. Um, it, was a, it was a Friday. I thought that was still a thing until they announced the tour. Hang on. So surely he would have been... No, no, no. He, he said he would give it a go, but then last minute he goes, no, nah, fuck it. No, nah, I'm not doing it. No, but then they now... Now that, yeah, now he's good. He's flying already. Yeah, shout out yeah. to the fucking Kardashian girl. Yeah, shout out to the therapist. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's uh, 2013, Soundwave, and I buy every ticket to every city because hmm. I want to see them. Plus yeah. the lineup is insane. Fucking Metallica's on the bill, Ooh, right? Yeah. So I go to Brisbane, the first yeah. city, and they play on the Friday. They like, have a, 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 a their own mm. solo gig, and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to that as well. And then the next night, was the, I think it was in the same spot anyway in, on, for Soundwave. And I was trying to I, – I hired some apartment out, and I stayed there. But then – and this is, this is why I got Twitter originally because I just mm. wanted to follow Mark to see what he was saying. And he, I remember I seeing a tweet on the Friday morning going, hey, I'm in the club – in the club and I'm like what mm. the fuck does that mean at 10 o'clock in the morning mm, which club so then I'm like okay he's having breakfast though in a club in a club where are the uh, people staying and it's normally Novotel Novotel's mm. normally hosts the celebrities back then anyway so I was like okay what is the 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 breakfast place called at Novotel it was called the club Oh, so I was like I went and, and it was like a five minute walk down the road from where I was staying. I got there and then I went straight into the elevator, past the reception, got upstairs, 
and I'm seeing the breakfast bar, but there's doors there. You mm-hmm. have to have a key to get in because it's all buffet, it's all access, like free breakfast included. Mm-hmm. And there's no one in there except for him and his family. And I'm like, holy fuck, there he is. I'm like, I've cracked a code. I've found mm-hmm. him. I'm a fucking stalker. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm like trying to get in. I'm like, this lady comes out. She's like, can I help you? I'm like, hey, I'm just here to see old mate over there. And she's like, do you have a key card? I was like, nah. She's like, y- you need a key card. And I'm like, can I just go say hi? She's like, you need a key card. And I'm like, fuck. So I went downstairs and then I was like, how much for a room? And they're like, 400 bucks. And I'm just like, God damn it. My yeah. fucking teenage music hero <laughs> is $400 away. I could literally talk to him and speak to him. So I was like, fuck it. I got, got a room, 400 bucks. Did you get <laughs> the them? Yeah, went straight up there with a key card. Bang. Went in, said, hey. I was, wasn't too disruptive, but I was a little bit fanboying. Mm. And I was like, hey, man, you know, love your shit. You know, the music, showed him the tattoo. And he's like, great. <laughs> and then I said to him, can we hang out? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, my God. He goes – but no. he goes – no, he goes to me, hey, I'm hanging out with my family at the moment. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Can I just take a picture? Mm. And he goes, yeah, no worries. Had a photo. And then I didn't realize – because it all happened so quickly. Went downstairs and then I thought about it and I was just like, fuck, that was dumb. Dumb, yeah, dumb, that, dumb. you would do dumb things with like your yeah, I was or 20, your heroes. Yeah, he was 21 and yeah. I was just and like – And he was nice enough to say dude, no in a nice way. Yeah, and, and got a photo. And then I'm sitting downstairs in the lobby because I have a little fucking – little mini restaurant down there and then walk uh some uh one of the the, the lead singer of offsprings walk past and i'm like oh starting to, starting to slowly walk <laughs> towards talking everyone in the list look, and in the corner of my eye standing walking right behind him tom DeLong. Oh. and i'm just like uh, oh, oh fuck and then straight to him and he's pretty tall guy mm. so i'm like hey man how you going he's like hey bro it was it was cool it was cool and then i got a photo with him as well and uh yeah that was it and then later on i told my mates i was like bro fucking found them come down <laughs> here they are here right now and my mates come in we're sitting in the lobby again waiting for them and we were like looking at the, like in the out of the elevators are they coming are they do you have a visual do you have a visual are they surely going to come out they're going to come out before the show and then they came out and we rushed them and we were like yeah take a photo and got a photo again with them um but yeah didn't complete the set though no travis so I need ah, to get the that. band. I need to get it. And I wish the the it of the band. That's I think. right. That's right. But yeah, I was fucking fanboy. But what I learned from that was they're just people. You got to be. Mm. You, you got to like. I talked to him a little bit, but I was all about you know flexing the photo. That's not the way to go about it. Don't fucking don't have that moment in time with someone that you admire for a photo and then fuck off because that's what I like now being all this famous on TikTok yeah. and shit. All these kids come up to me, hey, Sam, can I have a photo? I'm like, yeah, man, what's your name? You know, hey, nice to meet you. You know, like, let's talk for yeah. a little bit. And then they take the photo and they fuck off. They say, thanks for the photo. That's all they want sometimes, you know, because yeah, you know what? Sometimes they go, I don't want to interrupt your day too, right? That's true. Because they're that's probably true. thinking, oh, I don't want to interrupt your day. But it's but, a you transaction. Know, the least, like, you, I feel like it, I'm a whore, you know? I'm well, whore, you know, yeah. you're giving them something to, am, to remember, which right. is the photo. It's better than nothing. That's but right. hey, look, you can't take a photo. But, but Flea, Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, he doesn't allow that. And he's got the same theory. Mm. He goes, I don't allow for photos. I'd rather have a, a conversation, an interaction, something more memorable. I mean, yeah, photos forever. Like, but no shit, I'll remember. I'll forget this. Just give me the fucking photo. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do I'll, both I'll have at the same my, time. I'll have my phone yeah. saved up. I'll just have like a, someone in the background taking a photo of you take, having a conversation. Mm. That's what we did. But yeah, what about you? What's your like, like your, your mem- most memorable celebrity encounter? I don't know. I met a lot of celebrities and I've done dumb shit in front of them. Come on. Story yeah. time, surely. Oh man, I, I can't really say this because drugs involved. Give me, give me, <laughs> all right, give me a vanilla one then. A vanilla one? <laughs> <laughs> I have so many back of the... Um, you know, back of the stage kind of thing. Yeah. Things that I can't disclose. No, that's fine. That's, that's it's, fine. It's part of uh, my personal memory. But there's moments where I'm like, there's so many moments, you know, we had Diplo in the store and mm. I end up dance battling the manager on stage oh. while Diplo was playing. Because he was like, that's, I heard you break. I'm like, I'll break too. All right, let's, let's battle. I'm like, oh, we're battling <laughs> while Diplo is playing. Um, so that was kind of cool. Had a moment, had a DNM with Reggie Snow in the back where, you know, he wants me to, we're just smoking weed and just wants me to create a uh, 
help him with his brand <laughs> and then bumped me to Hermit Tube and I was super drunk and he's like, hey, do you want to dance? On st- I heard you're a dancer. I'm like, oh, all right, I'll dance. But I never rocked up because I was too para, too para <laughs> to do anything. Uh, you know, just so many uh, just back of the stage thing. But I never like, I'm like, oh, I'm, you're so, so, you know, I've been like this close with Billy and, and she was surrounded by all the parents and um, Billy Eilish. Um, was that like a couple of weeks ago? No, this was GTM back then. I didn't. I didn't oh. know she was here last time. Oh, the just, promotion yeah, yeah. is just horrible. I'm like, what? I, I mean, it was I a good turnout. Well, I heard. I heard it was packed. <laughs> they had to open another show. Yeah, but obviously, it was probably they announced it on the radio, and I don't listen to the radio anymore. I don't. They know. must have. Yeah, I don't. Because know. only the kids know, and I'm like, but the, the kids don't listen to radio, right? Maybe I mean, the parents I've, find I've out. seen it on maybe on, on TV. TikTok. I've seen it on, on TikTok. TikTok. That's probably well, no, I missed out. Best way to do it. So there's a lot of celebrity encounters, but I just never get. Like I'm not that like you said I, I treat them as people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you treat them like people, they actually are super nice to you. If you don't fanboy them, they actually treat you like friends. If you treat them like friends, they treat you like friends. I'm like, hey, you want a drink? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, what was that guy who who was that Bolt? Um, not longer. He was super famous. Kind of like has an emo look. Uh, what's his name? Anyways, he was just like next to me, like dancing behind the DJ. He was like, hey, you want a drink? Yeah, let's have a drink. You know, let's let's go. Um, but the ones that fanboying, the ones that go that strike. Oh no no no! You know th- these people are crazy. Yeah. Um, no no. I, you definitely need to fa- go past that phase eventually, unless yeah. Oh, whatever. I've been this close to Bella Hadid. Ooh. She was in a show in Paris, um, and we just full of paparazzi. So I was like, ah, I'm not gonna say hi. You know, just let them be. Um, but yeah. yeah, just. It's cool if they approach you or their management. I'm more interested you. in like how tall are they in real life? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm sure I'm ha. Huh. So she's about my height. No, I'm a bit taller. Um, <laughs> you know, I saw the uh, Arya from Game of Thrones, just like literally sitting in front of me. I was next to Jay Balvin sitting on the show. Was this at Supernova or something? No, this was at Paris Fashion Week. I was like oh, literally cool. next to um, Jay Balvin and his hot girlfriend next to him. Like, oh, hey, Jay. <laughs> um, but you know, it was really funny because it's encamped. Mm. Like you know, we see we see them all the time. But like, if you, like I said, if you treat them like people, they're just super cool, man. Like you know, yeah. Um, no, they respect it. They yeah, they, they appreciate 100%. it. And and so like I've, it's weird saying this, but I've, I've, I've but I I know what it's like. Is, like you, you have to be confident in your values too. Like you don't want to lower yourself no. when you're like around them. Like, hey, look, I'm the same. If not, I'm probably just as good as you are. Yeah. Once you start lowering yourself, being a fanboy, that's when they go, oh, you're not you're not same level as us. You're not gonna hang out with us. Um, but if you're kind of, hey, look, I'm, I'm probably more valuable. I've got enough my, of my worth to. Yeah, you got to have value. You got to bring value to the yeah. table, not just be a cooked out. That, that's the key of socializing, isn't it? That's like right. demonstrate values, the higher yeah. values. Yeah. I learned that off the book, the game, how to the pick net, up yeah. the pickup artist. That's it. Um, very, very helpful book if you just want to learn how to socialize. <laughs> and pick up girls, <laughs> but most I use that for socializing. So, um, when you mentioned um, Paris Fashion Week before, mm. you've been to the Milan one. Yeah, I used to do Milan, Paris, um, and Japan. I used to do Japan, Japan quite a bit as well. Is that the Tokyo one? Or? Tokyo was more like they don't have a Fashion Week; they have like a Fashion Month, so they do showing different um, day of, for like a month. So mm. it's not like a cramped up fashion like Paris yeah. fashion we got all the brands showing back to back to back to back so people only stay there for like seven days um, Japan is like it was too widely spread so I don't do Japan often um, but mainly Paris and I used to do Milan but Milan was so boring and so expensive to do for like three days yeah, of I've, journey I've, when I went to Milan I found that Paris was a lot more interesting yeah um, and everyone goes to Paris and people yeah. used to go to New York fashion week but now everyone just focusing on, on Paris fashion week yeah yeah, so it's not. So not Paris is the one to go to, right? Paris, the only one to go the to. Only one to go yeah, to. I think okay. it's not worth going to okay. any other ones, unless you want to party with celebrities. You go to New York Fashion Week. Yeah, New York Fashion Week is known for that, and just like partying with celebrities. It's like a but now, like celebrities coming to Paris, anyways. So it's like okay, they're infiltrating Paris now. Yeah. It's a new thing. Oh, it's a kind of a common thing now where celebrities walk in the runway now, especially if you see recently, um, just full of celebrities. Yeah, no, for sure. I remember we were there just after. Yeah, just after because you were there, mm. and um, I saw I saw pictures of um, Kardashian, the, the the kids, Kim's kids, on the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, we're like, fuck, we were there the same day. Yeah, we didn't go to the Eiffel, we didn't go to the top there, but I was just like far out, and you see the like the background of the people around that like, they had mm. no idea. Obviously, 
Um, they posted it afterwards and they would have recognized them or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's crazy how like the fashion industries, like I'm slowly kind of getting into it. I wouldn't mind like a, mm. like a stylist as well. I'm just waiting for my sister to finish her fashion degree. Um, on that, what are your thoughts about fashion and that needing a fashion degree? What's, what, where do you sit with that? Cause you, you didn't get a fashion degree. You got a no. marketing degree. Nope. And again, this is when, when I figured out, hey, you don't need to study this. You just need to put yourself out there in the field, right? Kind of like I learned everything on the field, really. Yeah. It's like, oh, if I want to know, oh, how do you do budgeting? Okay, so how do you – so what do you mean by doing this, this? I, I would ask people around in the field. So that's the pre- business side, but what about the actual technical side of fashion itself? Like I don't know design. how to sell. I don't know. I just know what's going to be trendy. So I'm yeah. really, I have a thing for like I can predict trend. That's always been my thing. Um and my crew knows this, like, man, you predicted that it's going to be big next, you know, like a couple of years ago. And yeah. I knew it. And people would never, like, see it. Um, so how would you predict it? What's your – do you have, like, a key formula or is it secret? Not really. I think it's just, like, through things that I see. And, I'm, and I think those same people who are leading the industry would see that as well. Yeah. Things that you see and the things that you hear, the songs, like, the whole lifestyle, the whole community, the whole society. Yeah. And that's kind of dictate what's going to be trendy. Yeah. Um, so, how do you do that in Australia, where everybody fucking dresses the same? You don't look at them, <laughs> but you look at you know on social media, the world is so small now. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I like the Australian fashion. I think like when people ask me, what's this like? If you would create an iconic high fashion or the key look for Australians, what would it be? And I would say Kurt Cobain. Right, if you look at Kurt uh, Cobain's style, yeah, that punk grunge. I mean, I see it. That's all the actually time. on point right now. If you look I'll at, think about it. If you put Kurt Cobain in Fremantle, for example, he'll blend in. <laughs> <laughs> right, he'll blend right. You put him in a festival, he'll blend in. Yeah, but no, no shit though. It's just that that white tee, those kind of parachute kind of jeans. Just, I don't give a fuck. I wear whatever. I wear fur yeah. coat. I wear this, and I love that. Yeah. Put a mullet on. Put weird glasses on. Those glasses were so like trendy dealers, last year. Like, this that Kurt Cobain is the fashion but what's next what's next yeah oh there's a lot of um right now obviously kanye is a big influence whether you people are gonna cancel him or not i see him as a massive massive influence do you know what i mean i'm like so what with what he's doing with the fashion world and i see his like his style gonna come into play yeah. next whether he's he, got been he been gap recently well they've been him right? they've been him yeah oh, shit must have been wrong <laughs> cool. yeah well he, he said he'd been him but it's like he he crossed a lot of things on the contract and and same with Adidas and stuff like, you know, mm, that's why yeah. big companies, they don't, you know what, if you cross in the line, you're gonna, ter- they're gonna terminate the contract no matter what. Yeah, no matter who um, it is. But yeah. you know what, he's got the money, he's got the power, he can influence people. He's got his own brand. He's got his own brand. So mm. I don't understand why he should just focus on, he should just focus on Yeezy brand mm. without partnering with anyone. Um, I think he can make more money that way. So I see his influence a lot. I think the next, Five seven years, his style is gonna even be more prominent than ever. Especially if you've seen the Yeezy Gap Balenciaga silhouettes, he's pushing just really weird kind of. You know, everyone used to mock him for like wearing, uh, creating the homeless look, mm. right? It was oh yeah, it's like the whole Yeezys is based on. Yeah, but homeless. now everyone's wearing a shirt with holes in it. Yeah, well, that was been a thing for a punk, but he kind of yeah. created a, that look, that modernized take on yeah, that. Yeah, like a, like a fusion. Of yeah, the two. and even now it's like I'm looking at the Yeezy season nine. I'm like, wow. Okay, uh, very interesting. Um, I don't understand it. Very much like, you know, the fashion of Star Trek or, you know, like oh, yeah. Star Wars. Right? Kim, you look Kim's at collection through, um, was it Dolce & Gabbana? Fuck, I'm going to get yeah, married. Yeah, so that's Dolce, was yeah. Dolce? Yeah. That was actually really good. Mm. Like, and then she came out at the end and her, did you watch that? That was fucking sick. Yeah. Like I've never really paid attention to fashion shows, mm. but my sister got me onto it and I was like, oh, wow. Because I was yeah. like... Oh, I don't know. Seems, seems like she's just like the icon. And now I feel like fashion is so accessible and like, you know, people it becoming more prominent in everyday's conversations. Yeah. Back then it's not. And that's the thing that I want to create in, in Australia, right? Like we, we, if you go to Paris, we talk about fashion 24-7, how, you know, Australians talk about sports here, for example. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, did you see, did you watch the game? Did you watch the footy game over there? Oh, did you see the collection from, you know, Armani? Or did you oh, see the collection? You know, that's that's a, yeah. yeah, because that's the, the yeah. sport there, over there, right? So I want to 
normalize that, like how we're talking now about fashion. I mean, just yeah. that collection, it was amazing. I got a question for you about fashion mm. in terms of big boys, right? You see the NBA, right? And you see them walk in to the game and they're all kids. Tunnel out, fashion. Right? What is it called? They call it tunnel fashion. Tunnel like when fa- they walk through the, the tunnel. Yeah, tunnel yeah. fashion. So that there's this whole all thing. That's that's one whole catwalk for yeah. but now I'm like, because I haven't done research, so it's good to ask you right here. Where the fuck do they get those clothes from? Same thing, stylist. So like my friend No, um, but what brands cater to that size? Oh, a lot. Like for example, if you look at Kaiser Clark, our friend's brand, Mark Mark Kaiser, shout out to Mark Kaiser. Um, he just did a collaboration with NBA. Mm. So his brand was probably the most born in in within the NBA community. Is it like top tier pricing or is it affordable? Yeah, t shirts probably two fifty, three hundred. Um, so luxury. Yeah, that is a high amazing. end fucking t shirt. Yeah, I mean it's so normal now. You know, yeah. like I mean, Yeezy Gap Balenciaga stuff is like I mean I mean that that's bucks. the that's the brand, right? But is there something that is, you know, warrants the same sort of quality material for a more affordable price for for young uh, six foot like seven like kids quality <laughs> is so subjective ah, yeah. I'll spend $800 on a Gucci t-shirt super nice silky material put in wash once holes yeah that's so, shit and then like you can buy a $5 super high like super um, slubby cotton very thick material and it'll last you a long time mm. but it'll be a cheaper cotton so for you which one is a better quality a thin, soft cotton, a silky, but then they don't last depends long. Depends on the brand, or <laughs> maybe. I mean, no, it some depends br- on your love for the brand. How loyal are you? For me, it's like the price is just trying. It's building your emotional attachment to it. It is. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I say, "Hey, this T-shirt is five hundred bucks. It's a black T-shirt." Yeah. You don't need to know that, but for me, I like. I know what I'm wearing. But I need quality, right? I need quality. So, and I need shit that fits me. So I've got a couple brands. Uh, there's three I can and think of I in just Australia. Tell you, what about this, right? Quality. What about it's a high end? Um, it's a super luxury cotton. Say it's a Supima cotton or a Sea Island cotton, the most yep. expensive cotton in the world. But then it's produced in a sweatshop. See that? But then it's a high quality. Nah, so you know, but it's produced in a sweatshop. So would you regard that as high in quality, or I would, would you say produce that as a fast fashion? You know, so it's kind of like what fashion, I say. Yeah. Quality is very subjective, right? And you have to kind of really dig into behind the scene before we can judge. And you know, like for for a lot of rich people, that eight hundred Gucci t shirt is high quality. Yeah, um, very soft material, and you got a nice tag on it. But for for me, for me, it's like, man, yeah, I paid it, and it only lasts me probably 10, 10 wears. <sighs> yeah, I've got three different brands in in Australia, um, and. They fit me pretty well, and I'm doing some collaborations with them. Um, but I'm still looking for something different, mm. right? I'm, I'm I'm actually being to Paris now and Milan recently. They've got they've got some cool outfits, but I know none of them will be fitting me. So if you were to style me, where would you recommend? You'd be surprised. I mean, if you look at buying Balenciaga, for example, you're probably a size medium. Size medium. Yeah, because they run really oversized. Uh, on no. the new styling anyways yeah. and then you go to Celine you want fit you Louis Vuitton nowadays they make oversized fit so it'll fit you so you'd be surprised you're gonna have to look, look around mm. um, you just have to kind of like try them hey have you got what's the biggest size oh, extra large put me put them on up oh, fits me right it's more about like find what you like and, and there's a lot of cool brands out there almost like too many brands out there to choose from it's a good problem to have mm. but yeah I and don't know but if then, like, out- it's so saturated like what do you pick yeah. I like that T-shirt from that brand, but I like that pants from that brand. You know, oh, there's a cheaper version of that T-shirt that I like, but yeah. from this brand. Yeah. You know, because that brand looks up to that brand. Mm. You know, but you can get a cheap alternative for that. And then you, I mean, I I grew up with the sneaker thing. Mm. And that's how I got to know you. Um, back at Shafto Lane, that first Yeezy, part was it Pirate Blacks? Yeah, yeah. Old mate, cop the pair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I remember you were like the only one in Perth with a Yeezy mm. account. How did you snatch that? Oh, so long ago. I didn't even remember how we got it. I think we had a cool direction and um, I don't know. I think it was, yeah. It was, it was very aligned with his style and mm. his kind of uh, aesthetics. I think that's what Adidas will communicate with. Hey, they want to put it into like top boutique only like high-end boutique, like luxury boutique. Ooh. They want to position it to 
And that's why like for me, transitioning from sneaker store to a fashion store, a luxury fashion store, is a big jump. Mm. When we were a sneaker store, we couldn't get all these luxury designer store, uh, brand because they they're looked down on sneaker stores for some reason. So now for us, we had to transition into a you know, luxury designer store to be able to get some luxury fashion. And for us, it's more interesting selling those kind of thing. And that's why we, I, I love sneakers, but I've kind of fell out of sneakers because it's so saturated now. Yeah. Like when I see kids wearing my shoes, I'm like, I don't want to wear what 15 year olds are wearing. 30, I mean, not, don't get me wrong, but I'm an adult now, you know, like I don't want to wear the same stuff as they do. I haven't seen and kids wear, know. like I'm wearing pandas right now, but these are high top OG Nike tongue pandas. See if I see, like if I own a panda and I see, I wouldn't even wear it until next, maybe 10 years later. And these are my beaters. Like mm. this is fucked. Yeah. And, and people are like, what the fuck did you do to your pandas? I'm like, dude, I, mm. I bore these, I wore these when you were still in yeah, kindergarten. These, these are my panda loafers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same color. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm wearing like loafers. I'm wearing boots now. Cause I feel like, you know what? I'm going to like, Elevate, because we grew up watching the celebrities. That's how we got into sneakers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and like, basketball. Oh yeah, like basketball, we grew up watching oh. Jordan. So I'm like, and people now buying Jordans haven't even seen his game. So yeah. They don't, they don't have the same emotional attachment. No. They just know it's like it's other celebrities wearing Jordans. Yeah. So that's the emotional attachment to the shoe. Well, we had a different emotional attachment to the shoe. Mm. Like when we were wearing, like some people wearing, love the Penny Hardaway shoes or, you know, the Uptempo, the Pippins, right? So like people yeah. have association with these shoes, from the players, but now they don't. They have association with like, oh, those Jordans because of Off White collaboration, for example. Yes. That's the association, yeah. right? Everyone's going about the Travis Scotts, the Off Whites, Scott. and, and so that's the new attachment to it. It's the it's the new celebrity collaborations, and that's where Jordan's pivoted very well because he understood that. Very, and well. that's why I love what Kanye is doing. He's mm. he's the new kind of the Kanye era is different to the Jordan era, the Yeezy era. Mm. He single handedly did that. Except those fucking foams, man. I don't get it. Those you don't get it, but like you know what, you talk about it. But so I like, do. Yeah, this, yeah. this is what Jeff. I love what Jeff Staples said. Right, the more people hating. So when, when Jeff Staples said, hey, "Look, I normally read the negative comments. So the more negative comments I get or they get, the more sales they make." So when Kanye have more negative um, feedback, oh, yeah. it's gonna sell out yeah. really quickly because people so like it, you know you want to evoke emotions with art with product. You know if you if you kind of like oh that product is meh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it. But if you hate it, man, you talk about it. oh my god that product. And the same time people are gonna talk about it, and then before you know, it, hey, you're just promoting the fuck out of that brand, yeah. out of that product. Um, and that's why negative feedback is good. That's why he makes some outrageous. Stuff. That's all marketing. It's very smart marketing. Yeah, any, any holy, publicity is good. What publicity. Do you, I'll call it the duck hoof Yeezy. You know which one I'm talking about? The, the webs. Oh Looking yeah. Look, it looks like he's got a fucking tumor on your top, like a duck feet. Foam runners. Foam runners. Foam runners. Those are the ones I was talking about. Yeah. yeah foam runners. I look, I look at them and they're so ugly, but I know it's going like to create havoc. I like the slides. They're very clean. Yeah, Just they're like, clean. I see a lot of knockoff. I went to Cotton On and had a lot of knockoffs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you also know you've made it. Everyone's Im- yeah, imitating 100%. you. All these fakes coming out. And now with the, the, um, the rain boots that he's doing. Oh, um, my Kanye's God. doing the rain yeah. boots. I'm like, wow. White Lives Matter. Smart. Yeah, yeah. White Lives Smart. Matter. Marketing, man. Marketing. <laughs> You know, people hating on it and they think he's a dumbasses and all that. But, man, he I love what he's doing. Like, in terms of marketing, I find it funny, right? Because he'll, I think it's great. he'll create controversy and the next day he'll, he'll release his album. I think it's great. It's the same as, like, back in the days of Paris Hilton. All my life I grew up mm. thinking, what a dumb bitch. But it was all and an she's act. she's back now on a runway. But it was all an act. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck, she fooled me. When I was talking about her mm. the whole time. I was like, fuck this Paris Hilton bitch, you know, all this stuff. And she made a music album and shit. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Why is this so bitch famous? Smart. Right? And then I look, I look back now and where she is now. I was like, holy shit. But maybe that's, she, that's a smart she, bitch. Maybe she doesn't even know it, but then the managers know how to do it, right? Maybe the- I'm going to so give the, her credit. The puppeteers, but I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Maybe she doesn't know it, but like, hey, you know what? This, we can create yeah, something yeah, yeah. out of this. Yeah. Same thing with- um, with Kanye, probably like, oh, the publisher or whatever, the producer, like, oh, I like this. I like you do it. need strategists. It's like if you go to a TV show, the players or the, the actor and the actors, the people involved in the show, they don't know what they're doing. No. They're, just, they're just doing it. But then the producer, hey, look, oh. cut into this. Yeah. Oh, put at that, give, um, you know, add that uh, yeah. guy's ex in a Love Island or Batch or whatever. I've, been, I've, been, I've interviewed a few of those people yeah. and they've given me the spill. I wasn't allowed to air it afterwards because they realize they've said too much and it breaches it's the common contract. Sense. Like there's a it TV is. show um, about it. What is it called? Um, well, not many people show. know about it. 
Yeah. Not many people know about that. There's a TV show know. based on that, producers, you know, manipulating that. And I feel oh, like yeah. the same thing with, with brands, with um, celebrities. They're just little, they're just the pawns of the yeah. brand. The yeah, more controversial, exactly. the better. That's why podcasts, I think, are working well now because it's authentic. Mm. It's uncut to, to their knowledge, especially video podcasts. Um, vodcasts, that could be a thing. Vodcast. New drink? Yeah, <laughs> vodcast. But vodcast. Um, it's it's raw. That's why Joe Rogan's so successful. It's raw. It's mm. no bullshit. It's just they, they just talk about stuff. Whereas TV show or uh, TV presenters like Jimmy Kimmel and shit, one of my mates said to me, he's a comedian, he's a com- comedy writer for like big time shows in America and over East. He said to me, do you know all these are pre-planned questions? Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, these interviews, they don't just sit down and then just start talking and, and it's funny. They got their teleprompter gone. No, no, well, sometimes maybe, but they actually, they actually, uh, pr- like, they know what mm. gonna, they, they're going to be asked so they can practice their response. And I'm just like, I mean, blew like, my Joe, mind. Joe Rogan were just getting high, yes, drinking alcohol. I that's love that. what I like. I don't even watch do the talk That's what I want high club, you yeah. know, podcast. Yeah, do it. Drink tequila, get high. Is that legal? To, to uh, smoke weed I don't even know apparently, apparently it's coming in In the next couple of years here mm. Italy just became legal And mm. I think Thailand Has actually mm. This is crazy Thailand's Thai, uh, There was a Vice um, An episode on Vice On YouTube Like Thai Thai's weed And people getting super high in Thailand It's like weed's such a, a, a Huge thing there now Yeah the, the, the temperature's perfect for mm. that shit mm. Apparently, I have no fucking Time clue. to check out uh, Thailand, I guess. Well, well, it's a big deal over there because before you get you get executed for mm. that shit. Like Bali as well. Yeah. You know, same thing. I mean, for me, and again, I say this every time someone talks about Bali like it's the best thing. Thailand makes Bali look like mm. it's from fucking Wish. Thailand for me, and it's a subjective obviously, but mm. Thailand is awesome. And imagine mm. when weed becomes legal in Thailand. Holy shit. You ever go down Bangla Road in Phuket? That's where the mm. fucking parties happen. Bangla Road. You've gone, you gone to Bangkok though before, yeah? Yeah, but when I was a kid. Oh. So not when I'm an adult. We, we should do a Bangkok experimental. trip. Yeah. I'm scared that I'm never Leave coming back. I love, I love Bali. You know, yeah. I love Bali because it's kind of like... But where in Bali? Oh, I stayed in the Changu area like everyone else did. Uh, I went um, to Ubud. Ubud was nice. Ubud, yeah, beautiful. Uluwatu is the spot now yeah. along the ki- a cliff. Um, but I don't know. That's why I wanna, I'm so adamant to to do business in, in Bali, maybe like do a Cabinet Noir luxury yeah, villa. the villa thing. The tell, villa. Me about, tell me about the villa thing and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with the, uh, with the coffee. So like I said, like Cabinet Noir, anything, any project that we want to do has to have a concept behind it. Yeah. So um, we want to create a luxury villa, Cabinet Noir branding. You stay there a few days and you get a – Complimentary row with our <laughs> Cabinet brand. You can do whatever you little, want with little, the content little gift creation, pack. Little, gift pack, yeah. right? So, um, and we want to just make it so aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of like villas that are so aesthetically pleasing. I'm like, I want to stay there. It's you good know, for creatives to to be yeah, creative in because I'm sick and tired of seeing the same villa. So it's like you know, cool. We and we want to. I do want to have five villas all different locations: Ubud, Changu, Piranan. Um, Uluwati, they would all you have call a it different cab theme. villas, or how would you? Cabin Noir LV luxury villa, right? <laughs> so LV one will be like LV, luxury villa. Louis Vuitton Uluwati. is currently typing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Being sweet. laughs> and every villa would have a theme, kind of like Disneyland. You know, like when you go, oh Disney World, you got a Disney Resort. Oh, you want to go the yeah. the jungle theme or the water theme yeah. um, resort. You know, I want to do the same thing with like the luxury, but oh, this is the concrete theme. Oh, this yeah. is the pink house. Oh, this is the whatever, right? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The total like branding it internally. Mm. So thinking about Bali, thinking about resorts, thinking about villas, what is your idea of a relaxing go? Relaxing for me is going to yelling up Margaret River for like three, four days. It's the only place in the world that I feel so relaxed, stress-free, um, this is why I tell to all my friends, man, you know, going down south, it's like, it's like, can you imagine <laughs> toilet full of shit <laughs> going down south to me, just flushing it. Right. So now you're ready to come back to work, fill your toilet bowl with more shit. <laughs> and then once you go overfill, I'm like, all right, let's go back down south. 
flush the toilet. How many how many weeks generally is that before you I need to flush? I need four five days. Oh, before I flush. Normally around this time before Christmas. No, well, do you do you do it? Obviously, do it more than once a year. How many weeks of grinding and working hard do you? To be honest, I usually do it around now, like October, November. I just been. Last week I went oh, okay. three days. So every t- other time you're not really phased to go anywhere? Um, I go to other, other other countries. Like, for example, yeah. during winter I'll go to Paris. That's kind of my de-stress because Paris in summer is nice. Yeah. Like, I, I would say de-stress, more like filling with energy. Reset. Like, not reset, but I'm like absorbing the energy of uh, different city. Yes. Right, so like, you get yeah. complacent in Perth or I'm, like, right, I'm kind of like my battery needs charging. I go to Paris. Mm. And then down south, it's more like, oh, I need to replace my battery. Or I need to, you yeah, know, yeah, I get you. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's something, a different- Something, something different. Mm, it's a different kind of use, I guess, for my travel. And I see my travels like that. I go to a big city to charge up and I go to down south, yelling up or somewhere in nature to declutter, distress, yeah. and just kind of level my vibration down a bit. I love yeah. that. That's good. Um, all right, what's the biggest lie you once believed was true? The biggest lie you once believed was true. Um, I don't think it was a lie, but I think it was a secret. Oh. So I mean, like, no one really lied to me about anything. Okay. With everyone telling me the right thing to each other. But for me, the biggest thing is, like, that I learned no dream is big enough. And I wish I knew that before, right? Because I was trying to humble myself. Oh, you don't think too big. Don't wish too high. And, you know, and for me, I, I wish I learned that the genie will grant you anything you want. And the genie being the universe, being the law of attraction, being whatever, like if you speak it to your mind, whatever you want in your head and you believe it, it will come through somehow. I'm so motivationally erect right now. It's so true. It's crazy. <laughs> like, 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 you know what? How many people I ask, all right, if a genie asks you, what are your three wishes? Give me 30, 60 seconds. Now, Go. They can't even answer me that. You know what I mean, like they don't have wish big enough for them to to ask, and that's why their their life goes around and uh, around about. What are your three? My three? Yeah, I want a thirty billion dollar empire that I can help <laughs> the the poor kids. You know, I want to have a mansion by the beach with a rooftop garden. So that's your selfish goal, and then your selfless goal is helping kids. What's your third thing? Well, just like so, I have I have a few dreams. I have a few goals. I wouldn't say dreams because like. It makes it so no, I said wishes. I need right? three. So I want three. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just saying my, my so, third one. Yeah, okay. So I've got, what was the first one? It's like help, get $30 billion so I can help the poor and the kids, right? Yep. So if, more like a philanthropic project. Yeah. And then the second one will be building a house and, and family, having all that. Of course. You know, the third one is just creating um, a brand so powerful, so big enough that we can actually help each other for peace um, and that's, that's, for me, it's like a big one, you know, like just connecting everybody through our brand yeah. and then just growing our family with that brand, Cabin Noir being that brand, being yeah. the, if, if you like the Prometheus to a different world, <laughs> right? I'm bringing, I'm trying to bring everybody to a different planet. And that's what, for me, the Cabin Noir, yeah. with the, the ethos and, you know, what we, we're doing is for. So you did that, the first branch out is the coffee. First branch out is coffee. And we and might get into going? liquor. Which how's that I going so far, the coffee? The coffee's going great. You have to try it. Um, so we created this blend inspired by Snickers bar. So I have sweet tooth, so I hate like bitter coffee. So this coffee is designed for people to want to eat chocolate cake or Ooh, you know, sweets after that. That's evil. Yeah, so it had that nutty, chocolatey flavor. Yeah. So like a lot of the coffee shops in city very much a lot of people like that sort of bitter taste, but I don't. No. I like the coastal coffee taste. Yeah. So when you imagine, um, I envision our coffee, like if you have a sip, you can just watch the waves on the horizon of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you have that sort of nutty flavor, that yeah. winter flavor. But not the, not the not mediocre. The bitter, like, oh, I want to. Not the mediocre ones we get on the coast. No disrespect, sorry guys. The coffee's great in Australia, but man, there's so much better stuff out there. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, and that's what we want. I mean, expanding it, we're learning more about coffee. Mm. I'm learning more about coffee and Bruce is learning more about coffee. But your store is now starting to get momentum? Yeah, yeah. So the, the cafe's, gen- like we're finally getting people it's, it's hard to convince people to leave their, their local coffee shops, right? Yeah. So for us, it's like to convince them to offer them, hey, look, try a coffee, give it a shot. 
if you like it, keep coming back. And, I need you know, to do a version two of that video that went viral. Yes, yes, yes. We're still trying it. to get a sign. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Council. believe you don't See have a sign. Come on. So then you're talking about alcohol. You're talking about tequila, maybe a vodka. Yeah, so I do even want to do a tequila brand, mm. like Cabernet Noir Tequila. And I'm a big fan of tequila. As you can see, I've got a tequila tattoo here. And initially, we're going to go through the process of launching a vodka brand. Um, we were doing one with Haver before, with Dean Buchanan. And so he extracted the the liquor from uh, Pinot Noir, which is the concept, because Cabernet Noir, Pinot Noir. So the vodka tastes Aye. like wine. Ugh. But now we have access to the tequila brand. So we, we're going to venture out into that, which I've got meetings with our team, and, and we'll see if we can fulfill it for nice. 2023. And what about what about fragrances? If you wanting to make That's a cabinet noir it's fragrance. It's very, very hard, but you know, um, funny what you say you, that. What would it smell like in your perfect world? So it'll have some sort of oud. Um, oud is my favorite um, natural smell and tuberose and jasmine also. Uh. Um, so smell of barley, wood, incense, oud, all combine into that muskiness and it'll last a long time. I like having you know, a few dabs and then it'll last you for a long time. And that's what oud does. So you have two dabs, Ooh, oud oil, and nice. I get guaranteed girls, but like, oh my God, you smell really good. I'm so keen. <laughs> I'm so keen. Oh, shit. So what is, uh, what is the one thing that you would give advice for, for anyone about anything? I would recommend you try as many things as you can before you stick to one. And I would want you to stick to that one thing religiously and passionately and almost to a point where you're obsessively obs- that one thing. You want to perfect your craft. If you want to become successful at that, um, this is what I learned from, you know, the Michael Jordan, the Kobe Bryant, you know, the, the top chefs in the world. You know, we see them so passionate of like what they want to do with that one thing. Just be obsessive, focus on that one thing. Focus on that goal. Elon Musk, he's focused on getting people into the Mars. Do you know what I mean? Be obsessive to a point where you need to be obsessive and you have to believe that that's the direction. It's like, this is what I say to people, like, man, imagine you want to go somewhere, but you like, all right, I'm putting myself, or I'm going to go to this address, but then you keep changing your address. Like, if you keep changing your address, you're never going to get to you you where need, you want. You need the destination clear. You need clear. the destination clear. Yeah. Get there before you, ah, I've been there. Now tap in another address. Yeah. You know, tap in another address, but be obsessive before you steer away, before you get distracted. Um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. I wish I can tell that to myself when I was younger. And I'm like, hey man, just Same focus advice. on this one thing. Even if you're not sure about that one thing, if you don't know what you're doing, just focus on that until you love it. And then once you figure out what you want, be obsessed to that point. Absolutely. And, uh, and with that, how do we come about your brand? How do we buy a piece of clothing or a coffee? You can come to the shop um, and our store is a multi-brand store for now. You know, we want to cater for everybody until, I mean, slowly we're transitioning into phase three, which is um, ex- expanding our own collection, our own Cabin Noir collection, because that's, at the moment, it's just had a huge hype and huge um, want. People want it. You know, people really want it. And and what I love about it, it's, it's like when they wear our stuff, they feel, people have that sort of emotional attachment to, man, I love wearing this or I want to buy a Cabernet Noir piece for my 21st birthday, for example. They, they treat it as a luxury item. Oy. And I love that. You know, like, oh man, I love you appreciating the product. It's not like you're buying a t-shirt. I'm, like, oh, I'm done with it. And I want to buy a new t-shirt. But it's my whole, oh, I share this product. And every product, we put a lot of time into it. So then I can tell, oh, that's a 2015 collection. That's a 2021 collection. I can pinpoint which collection it is. Yeah. And I want them to know it too. Like, oh, yeah, I bought this in 2019. Yeah, I know, that's a 20, yeah. 2019 SS 2019. You know, that's a collection we like. Um, so every collection we, we're making has a story. And that's what we want to communicate with our customers. You know, again, this is a fine dining attitude but we're trying to still learning um, always learning always learning yeah forever learning i remember the cabinet um hoodie you gave me and i took it to kyrgyzstan i wear it i wore it on the on the three hour mountain trek on a horse and i was wearing it and i was it got so fucking hot so quickly (laughs) that was trying to 570 grams of japanese cotton (laughs) you're wearing in the mountains oh dude it was so warm Mm. yeah it was so warm i don't think it definitely matched the uh the scene but it definitely stood out but more recently when i took it with me somewhere else in the world 
Yeah, the, everyone's like looking, trying to read it, and it's. Cool. I love I love hearing feedback from people around the world. I mean, I wore it to Melbourne. I got a discount because so and so thought I was from Perth, and I they thought what I'm wearing is cool. And I'm like, oh, I love that, you know. Oh, I was wearing in in New York, and someone from yeah. Perth recognized it. Hey, you're from Perth, and then network there and be, make new friends. Um, you know, that's the sort of stuff that I love hearing. It's back. so cool. Yeah, it's just yeah. again connecting the people. That's what we want I with the it. brand. <laughs> Prometheus. <laughs> Prometheus. That's it. So hit up Eddie's uh, brand, Cabinet Noir. It's in the uh, description. And uh, let's see how you uh, handle the next uh, year before the uh, the big decade. One O. And also Thanks. all your expansions. And, uh, and we'll yeah. be following your journey, Sevo, as always. You know, we want to hit 10 million followers by next year, hopefully. <laughs> I'll be doing other shit before I do that. But yeah, yeah. for sure. And we'll collab and... Do a mm. Sevo Show cab Hell fucking yeah. one-off shirt that I'll only get to wear, you know? <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. As always, good thanks. <laughs>